Shimon, the robot, the music robot. Um, Gil, um, yeah, you're his, his father, his creator. In a way. In a way. Um, I'm going to talk to you in a bit, like, more thoroughly about everything, but maybe it's nice if you can first introduce us to Shimon. Sure. So this is Shimon. It's a robotic marimba player. It has four arms and eight sticks, much more than any humans. And it is designed to listen to music, like humans understand music, it understands music, but then it designs to improvise like machines, using algorithms that humans never play and using mechanical abilities that humans don't have. I see. And why is it called Shimon? Shimon is based on the verb to listen to in Hebrew. Ah. Uh, and I'm originally from Israel. Uh, this is the first robot that is actually designed to understand what human wants and then improvise and surprise and hopefully inspire them, as opposed to robots in the past that were just following instructions. So that's why listen, Shimon, is yeah. the verb and, and the core of what it does. Yeah, the listener. Okay, can you give me a short example of how it responds? Sure. I'll give you two examples. One, musically. When I play something... You see, it played back, it's similar but a little different, and it yeah. improvises if I play something else. But another interesting thing is that it's also social. So when I give it a beat, It's like bouncing on the beat. It understands the beat. And then it can start play and, and improvise based on what we play. Uh, because we feel that visual cues and social cues are very important. And it's like almost like he's looking at you and nodding. It does. And he, do, and he, he can do that with the rest of the band as well. And you will see it in the song. Okay. Let us, let us, what's, what's, this, what's the name of the song? This, the song is OO by Zach Kondak. Okay, we're going to listen to you. Thanks. What kind of music was this? So this is the first time we're trying to go into rock. We used to play jazz because jazz is about improvisation. Yeah. But now we're trying to explore other genres. And this is the first With Shimon. Song. Oh, yes. OK. Shimon is moving away a little bit from the jazz now. To the jazz, to the hip hop, to the uh, reggae, but also rock. Oh, Lord world, watch out. Um, let's talk about him a little bit more. You just um, uh, told me before, like, you know, you showed me what he can do. Um, let's start with, with why did you build him? Like, how did that idea come about? So I played with humans for many years. <laughs> and humans are great, really. I love humans. But at some point, I actually got into computer science and I asked myself, what happens if a computer will play with me, understand what I play, and think like humans don't think? Use algorithms that humans don't use. Mm. And then, back then, when I still wrote code, now I have students, mm -hmm. I wrote some basic applications that listens to piano and then do all kinds of mathematical manipulations that computers can do. Uh, and humans can't. Mm. Things that require things like fractals mm -hmm. uh, or genetic algorithms. But what was missing for me is acoustic sound. Okay. Uh, because no matter how good your speakers in a computer, there's something about the acoustic sound that is much richer. Yes. And then I thought, what could have digital brain that can improvise in interesting ways, but also acoustic sound? Mm. And the answer was robots. And that's where I came to Georgia Tech and I worked with students. Because Georgia Tech is? Is a university in Atlanta. Uh, technological, yeah. so I had great access to mechanical engineers and electrical engineers, because I wasn't, I'm still not. Uh, and we built the first robots that actually played drums that allowed for acoustic sound. Mm. But what we figured out is that there's much more in robotics than just the fact that sound is acoustic, because they are visual and they are social, and you can get to play with them and feeling that you're playing with an entity, an entity of its own that can inspire you and can surprise you. So we build on not only acoustic sound, but also on the visual cues that you can synchronize and coordinate and plan together how to play. You know, just like a guitar player and a bass player have to finish together, yeah. Shimon can also see me and understand what I'm doing based on my gestures, not only based on my music. Wow. And we also try to learn how uh, embodiment works, how music is being uh, created, not only with ideas that are uh, abstract, but also based on the body. So for example, I give an example, I will never come up when I'm improvised with an idea that requires 11 fingers, because I don't have 11 fingers. Shimon is similar, it's interesting to explore how we can play different music based on understanding his body. So all of these areas are really uh, inspiring, and then we allow uh, our students and, and, and colleagues to compose for it. Mm. Different algorithms, different ideas. We use neural networks and machine learning, which is the latest uh, uh, interest in computer science, to try to see if it can understand musical features 
from humans. Because the big idea behind Shimon is that it listens like a human, yeah. but improvised like a machine. So we fed it, for example, with thousands of songs, from Mozart to Madonna to Lady Gaga to the That's Beatles. That's all in, in his its brain. In its brain. And it uses neural networks to try to derive features and improvise based on the styles and combination of the styles of all of, all of these musicians to create something new and unique because uh, Mozart and the Beatles never met. And now we can kind of meet them and create something that is a combination, interesting mathematical manipulation of both. I don't know whether I think it's, it's, it's brilliant or scary. It's or both. both. It's both. It's both. Uh, so scary is, 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 is something that we are aware of, but the promise that m new music will be created, that will be inspiring, that will send shivers down our spine in new ways. Because can it sound really like human? Like if I would close my eyes and if I would hear him play, would I, would I absolutely not know that it's a robot? Yes and no. Uh, there are some elements that really belong to human. You know, the bobbing the head, we're trying to imitate human. Yeah. But we also celebrate that it doesn't sound like a human. Yeah. We want you not to think it's a human, we want to think, wow, what did I just hear? Yes. Is that, so if you hear the song, you'll see that there's combinations of, of things that sounds kind of robotic, but also sounds a little human. Yeah. And but that's the charm. That's the idea. All right. And you, you just said like you um, had access to a lot of, um, let's say, technical people um, in, in Atlanta. And, and you're not that technical. What, what were you when you started? What are you? I don't know what, what I am. What are you, Gil? <laughs> so my undergrad was both computer science and music, double major. So I did do some computer science, but not uh, electrical engineering and not... Uh, uh, mechanical engineering. But you, uh, you, you started playing music. My first thing was music. I played th since I was a kid. Yeah. And only at, in college I was exposed to uh, computer science and to coding, and that's when I tried to bring it together. And uh, through students I also brought, and colleagues, mm -hmm. uh, I brought uh, the hardware and, and the enge mechanical engineering into, into the... Something that I also thought was interesting is that you said that um, a lot of um, uh, children, when they teach music, the emphasis um, lays um, on, on uh, technique and a lot of training, and you feel that something else is more important than that. Right. So I feel expression and creativity can be taught and can be explored without figuring out first the technique and creating the right sound and knowing all the uh, harmony and theory that, that you need to know. And this is my work back uh, at MIT when I did my grad school. I developed all kinds of toys and instruments for children to oh. be able to uh, get directly into the heart of creating music oh. without learning necessarily uh, how to put your fingers on a, a piano or how to press a cello mm. a string. Uh, and this instrument allows you to bang on, on what we call beat bags and to, and, and to bend their, their antenna and send music back to each other and immediately deal with a high-level musical aspect such as tension and release and stability mm. without necessarily knowing this is a quarter note and uh, this is an eighth note and yeah. this is a triplet. So the creativity is very important. And it can be taught immediately before you get into the mechanical and into the theory and technique. Wow. Okay, so, so Shimon also knows how to be creative. Mm -hmm. Now what else, something else I think is very interesting is that on his data is 10 years of playing experience. It's interesting to see how people come and go, develop their own application, write their own songs, leave some heritage, and other people come and build on this and continue uh, to develop Shimon. Shimon today is much better than when it started. First it was only hands, because I wanted the acoustic sound. Yeah. Only then we developed the head for the social cues and, and, the, and, and the visual cues. Uh, and today it plays much more, better, uh, much more interesting things and there are more moments where I feel, hey, that was interesting, I didn't expect it that maybe even was inspiring, uh, maybe even emotional. Mm. In the beginning, I was mostly forgiving it yeah. uh, because it was not doing what I want, but now I call it he and not it, and it actually uh, can be inspiring and surprising and fun to play with. And when you say emotional, I mean, he doesn't know emotions. Music is such an emotional thing, both for the one that is playing, uh, also for the one that's listening. Mm -hmm. What does it mean in practice that he doesn't know emotions? So I have two answers for this. All right. First, there's a whole field in computer science of modeling emotions, try, and, and in music in particular. And mm -hmm. I have students that try to listen to music and have uh, understanding of this is a sad, this is a happy, and try to see what ab about it makes it sad or happy or mm -hmm. other emotions, and then come up with algorithm that will bring some of this emotion into Shimon, okay. also with the gestures. This is yeah. one answer. Working on this, it's not there yet. Second <laughs> answer is humans are awesome in emotion. Mm -hmm. Human has solved. Mm -hmm. and they have expression. 
And that's what they should bring into the game. Robots are good at other things. They have infinite memory. Ah. They have mechanical abilities. They have algorithms that humans never use. And the idea is that you bring your emotion and soul. They bring what they're good at. Everyone brings what they're good at. And hopefully there will be a spark that will create new music. I'm getting it. So it's not, it's not uh, the plan for it to, to replace musicians in any way. But it's, but it's to complete. Complete yeah. and interact and inspire. And inspire. Humans. I wish you the best of luck with that. Um, Gerben, jij komt erbij staan. Jij yeah. spreekt gewoon Nederlands. Jij, bent yeah. een, uh, jij komt van hier. De band is heel erg internationaal. Hoe is het om met uh, Simone te spelen? Want ik, ja, ik ben natuurlijk zelf muzikant, dus ik weet hoe belangrijk interactie is. Tussen de, de, de dynamiek tussen uh, muzikanten op een podium. Kan je dat krijgen van Simone? Uh, nou, ik denk dat we, we hebben één uh, avond gerepeteerd hebben. Uh, dus dan kun je nog niet alle gebieden verkennen. Maar ik denk dat op een bepaalde mate kun je hem uitdagen. En hij geeft antwoord als het ware. Hij communiceert. Ja. En uh, ja, hij communiceert toch ook net weer wat anders dan je gewend bent. En ja. dat is toch wel interessant. En zijn er, zijn er momenten dat jij uh, voelt van... Ja, maar nee, dit is toch wel een robot? Of, of, of is het wel organisch? Nee, dat gevoel van het is een robot was heel snel weg. Dat was eigenlijk, uh, want je speelde, dat zullen we in het volgende stuk ook doen. Dan speelt iedereen een soort kort fragment. En Simon uh, reageert daarop. En, uh, en het heeft altijd iets met wat je speelt. Dus hij luistert echt. Dus je voelt je wel connected er raar genoeg. Ja. Ah, bijzonder. Ja. Jullie gaan nog net geen biertje drinken na afloop. Hebben we wel met de rest gedaan, maar hij wou niet mee. Oh. Dus, uh, <laughs> nee. Oké, okay, nou superleuk. Um, nou ja, we gaan nog naar nog een stuk van jullie luisteren. Ja. Ik ben heel benieuwd uh, ja, hoe dat dan klinkt en uh, welke richting dat opgaat. En mensen kunnen natuurlijk gewoon nog naar Simone komen kijken. En, uh, nou, we gaan het zien. Ik ben ja. heel benieuwd. We gaan, we're gonna listen. Thank you so much for being Thank here. You. And good Appreciate luck with, uh, with everything. And if you invent, I don't know... Uh, an uh, even bigger one that plays, that's a, a, a one-robot band. We'll let you know. Come back. Okay. Yeah? Gil Weinberg, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.